At this weekend's conservative political action conference, we heard from not one, but two disgraced former presidents, both of whom are under investigation for effectively inciting attempted coups. One of those presidents, Brazil's Jair Bolsonaro, is doing what many leaders do when their two coup attempts fail. He spent the past few months essentially living in exile in Orlando, Florida, presumably to avoid the consequences of his misdeeds, although Bolsonaro claims he will return to his home any day now. But the other former president under investigation for launching a coup, you know, Donald Trump, our former president, he's not in exile. In fact, he's running again. And the twice-impeached candidate received a lavish welcome at CPAC. Trump handily won the very unscientific 2024 straw poll, which shows his tight grip on the party's base remains absolutely intact. And the ex-president's authoritarian leanings remain intact as well. After his speech, Trump told reporters he will not drop out of the race, even if he's indicted. I wouldn't even think about leaving. Uh, these are uh, fake stories. These are horrible. Uh, the press is uh, pressing them to do something, do something. And uh, it's, I think it's very sad for our country. I'm joined now by Jason Stanley, a professor of philosophy at Yale University and author of How Fascism Works, The Politics of Us and Them. Jason Stanley, thank you so much for joining us this evening. I always love talking to a fellow professor. Uh, let me start with this. I am so disturbed about the imagery here of Bolsonaro, who attempted a coup in his country and he had to run. He had to run because he recognized that he would actually face consequences in his old country. That's what's supposed to happen in a semi-functional democracy. What do you just think about the idea that Donald Trump, despite multiple investigations, multiple in violation of norms and laws and having secret documents and leading a coup attempt against his country, is still walking around free while other countries, democracies that we would say to be less sophisticated than America's, at least have enough authority to make their former leaders leave? So Donald Trump is attacking the rule of law. His very uh, his speech undermines the rule of law. He represents the rule of law not as a system of checks and balances, of fairness, a structure that keeps us as a functioning liberal democracy, but rather just as a tool of his enemies. He is saying to his supporters, it's all about us and them. There's no law in this country. There's just their tools and our tools, and we're going to crush them. And, and let's be clear, Bolsonaro is someone who praised uh, Brazil's military dictatorship, reinstated commemorations of the 1964 coup that toppled the democracy and, re and began two decades of brutal military di di dictatorship. And he's the second authoritarian leader who CPAC has brought in to speak to them in a row. I want to also point out, because I need people to understand the language that's being applied here and how similar it is to other dictators in the past. I want to play this sound of Trump at CPAC this weekend and get your thoughts on the other side. In 2016, I declared, I am your voice. Today, I add, I am your warrior. I am your justice. And for those who have been wronged and betrayed, I am your retribution. I am your retribution. I am your retribution. What kind of violent Star Wars nonsense is this, right? This does not sound like a president who represents the people. This sounds like someone who is continuing to foment a, a long-running insurrection that's being backed by members of Congress. How does that language of retribution sort of align Trump with other dictators who've been able to sort of stay, uh, I guess, from facing any real consequences in the countries that they attempted to overthrow? Let's be clear. This talk of internal, uh, internal enemies, revenge, retribution is the core anti-democratic talk, uh, demagoguery tracing back to Plato's Republic. Uh, when Plato talks about what a tyrant is, he talks about a tyrant saying, uh, war warning, saying, representing himself as the only person who can prevent, uh, prevent the internal enemy from overthrowing the nation. Uh, this revenge talk, revenge talk is at the very basis 
of incitement to violence. And we're talking about a president who's already been credibly accused of incitement to violence uh, with respect to his speech surrounding January 6th. This talk of revenge and retribution to, uh, to is, is a justification for violence. And what he's talking about is revenge and ret retribution against the rule of law. So he is saying the, the rule of law is the thing against which we are his supporters must take revenge. So this is a really an existential threat to the rule of law, to liberal democracy. Uh, and and it's a call, it's an incitement to violence because at the at the basis, you know, look at look at Russia's invasion of Ukraine. They said they're going to take revenge for uh, for what uh, Russians uh, uh, Ukrainians supposedly did to ethnic Russians. Every kind of incitement to violence, or it's the, it, it involves this call for revenge and retribution. Politics is not supposed to be about revenge. It's supposed to be about the peaceful transfer of power and someone ruling over people or leading people, even if they don't agree with them. Jason Stanley, thank you so much. I'm very envious of your students. You must be a great professor.